fifth Sunday after Easter. As we continue to celebrate the 50 days of Easter, today's gospel includes Jesus' promise that he goes to prepare a place for his followers in his Father's house. Our baptism commissions us to share Jesus' mission in the world. As 1 Peter reminds us, we are a holy people called to proclaim the one who called us out of darkness into light. In words and deeds, we bear witness to the risen Christ, our way, our truth, our life. The Lord be with you. As we gather to worship in various places, may we be blessed by God who forms us in word, sacrament, and community. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Pastor Stephen Weber from St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Cambridge, Ontario, and I'm glad to have you join us for worship today. On the order of the Chief Medical Officer of Health of Ontario, we have temporarily closed our church building and have suspended all gatherings, so we are worshiping online again today, now for the eighth time. Thank you to our Minister of Music, Katrina Lowe, for recording a prelude and postlude for us today. Your music is always a beautiful and important part of our worship at St. Paul's, and we appreciate your gift to us this day. And I want to thank you for watching out for one another. Thank you for the many forms of ministry, which do indeed make a difference in people's lives. I'll be checking in by phone as much as I'm able with many of our members. If you need assistance, please phone the church office and leave a message and I'll arrange for help. I check frequently for messages. At whatever time and location you are accessing this, thank you for doing so. It is good to be together in whatever way possible in this time of physical distancing. We continue now with a word of thanks from our National Bishop Susan Johnson, direct from her living room. Hello, dear members of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada. I wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you to all of you. To our rostered leaders who have been impressing me so much with your creativity and the ways you are providing ministry to and with our congregations and members and through specialized ministry in these challenging times of COVID-19, I want to say thank you. You've really inspired me and I've enjoyed the opportunity to worship with so many of you from coast to coast to coast. To the members of our congregations, our dear and important lay people, thank you for the ways that you continue to support your congregations and specialized ministries through participating in phone trees, through delivering um, bulletins or sermons um, to parishioners who aren't able to go with online services, um, for the ways you are able to maintain ministries in safe and appropriate ways. I want to say thank you. And thank you to all of you who are continuing to support our church financially. I know we've had to be creative about ways when we can't join together physically and pass the plate and, and offer up our offerings to God. We still need to make offerings to God and to support the work of our church. So thank you for the ways you are creatively finding ways to engage and support the work of ministry. It just goes to show you we are in this together, not just as Canadians, but as the ELCIC, and we are stronger together. I feel much more like we're connected as a, as a national church. It delights me to hear uh, the stories of people going and worshiping with each other, um, of praying for and with people from across our church. I appreciate the work that the Synod Bishops and I have been able to do together and the work that our treasurers from the Synods and the National Church have been able to do as well. We're all doing our very best to keep this beloved church going. Thank you in this Easter season for the way you continue to proclaim that Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism.
We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in the font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty, and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. I greet you with the ancient Easter greeting. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The call to worship. Come and know that God is good. We come seeking God's shelter. Come and know God's mercy. We come seeking wholeness and God's peace. Come and abide in God's steadfast love. Receive us as we are as we come to worship you, O God. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world, for he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Children's Time, Superheroes for God. I'm so very glad you're here because I know that you're bringing sunshine and joy wherever you are. So tell me something, who is your favorite superhero? Before the pandemic, I bet you might have said Superman, Spider-Man, Batman, and so on. But now that we've experienced the pandemic, another set of answers might come to mind. Doctors and nurses, pharmacists, farmers and those who work in grocery stores, and teachers. One of the many good things that God will bring out of this pandemic is the recognition about the importance of some jobs that previously we just didn't value perhaps as much as we should have. These newly recognized superheroes help us and heal us, take care of us, feed us, and motivate us to learn. So, who's your favorite superhero? Did you know that you are one of my favorite superheroes? You are a superhero. You are a superhero because God has given you special powers to do God's work. Whenever you do something loving, or kind, or helpful, or caring, I can see your superhero cape. Thank you for the way you use your superpowers to help others. And now as we prepare to pray, please take up your favorite prayer posture. That might be with hands out and palms up to receive God's love. Or your hands might be folded and eyes closed to help you concentrate on hearing God or perhaps you'd like to form an X across your chest. X is the first letter in Christ in Greek, and it feels like a hug from God. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for our superpowers. Help us to use our superpowers to share your love and care with all those around us. 
In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Your parents have children's bulletins for you that you're welcome to work on at any time, even while you're listening to the sermon. The reading. God's people chosen to proclaim God's mighty acts. Christ is the cornerstone of God's saving work and the foundation of our lives. We are God's chosen, holy people who continuously celebrate and declare the mercy of God we experience through Jesus Christ. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Like a newborn baby, desire the pure milk of the word. Nourished by it, you will grow into salvation, since you have tasted that the Lord is good. Now you are coming to him as to a living stone. Even though this stone was rejected by humans, from God's perspective, it is chosen, valuable. You yourselves are being built like living stones into a spiritual temple. You are being made into a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Thus it is written in Scripture, Look, I am laying a cornerstone in Zion, chosen, valuable. The person who believes in him will never be shamed. So God honors you who believe. For those who refuse to believe, though, the stone the builders tossed aside has become the capstone. This is a stone that makes people stumble and a rock that makes them fall. Because they refuse to believe in the word, they stumble. Indeed, this is the end to which they were appointed. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people who are God's own possession. You have become this people so that you may speak of the wonderful acts of the one who called you out of darkness into his amazing light. Once you weren't a people, but now you are God's people. Once you hadn't received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The church is not closed. The church building may not be open, but the church is not closed. The church is not closed because you are the church. As this reading from the first letter of Peter proclaims, you yourselves are being built like living stones into a spiritual temple. You are being made into a holy priesthood. The church is not closed because you are God's temple. The church is not closed because you are its priests. And I see you doing God's work. Again this week, after I phoned some of our members to see how they were doing, again this week I received a follow-up email which said, We are fortunate enough to not need any assistance at this time. I was thinking, however, if there is something that you or the church needs help with, let me know, and if I can help, I will. You know, this kind of offer happens pretty much every week. The church is not closed because you are the church. You are superheroes for God. Almost every time I call one of our members to check that they're doing okay, I'm told that one or two other members have also checked in on them to see how they're doing, to see if they need anything. The church is not closed because you are the church. You are superheroes for God. As we're reminded in the first letter of Peter, we are chosen by God for the high calling of priestly work, chosen to be a holy people, God's instruments to do God's work and speak out for God, to tell others of the night and day difference God made for us, as Eugene Peterson translates it in the Message Version. We are chosen, called, and enabled by God to make a difference in this world and to speak out about God's loving compassion. God's people have always been about righteousness and social justice. 
God's people have always been called to be superheroes. Here's a video from the Bible Project to say a bit more about God's working of righteousness and social justice through us. The biblical Hebrew word for righteousness is tzedakah, and it's more specific. It's an ethical standard that refers to right relationships between people. It's about treating others as the image of God. With the God-given dignity they deserve. And this word justice, it's the Hebrew word mishpat. It can refer to retributive justice. Like if I steal something, I pay the consequences. Exactly. Yet most often in the Bible, mishpat refers to restorative justice. It means going a step further, actually seeking out vulnerable people who are being taken advantage of and helping them. Yeah, some people call this charity. But mishpat involves way more. It means taking steps to advocate for the vulnerable and changing social structures to prevent injustice. So justice and righteousness are about a radical, selfless way of life. Yeah, and you find this idea all over the Bible. like. Here, in the book of Proverbs, what does it mean to bring about just righteousness? Open your mouth for those who can't speak for themselves. And what do these words mean for the prophets, like Jeremiah? Rescue the disadvantaged and don't tolerate oppression or violence against the immigrant, the orphan, and the widow. And like here, look in the book of Psalms. The Lord God upholds justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry, and sets the prisoner free but he thwarts the way of the wicked. Whoa, he thwarts the wicked? Yeah, in Hebrew, the word wicked is rasha. It means guilty or in the wrong. It refers to someone who mistreats another human, ignoring their dignity as an image of God. So justice and righteousness is a big deal to God. Yes, it's what Abraham's family, the Israelites, were to be all about. The earliest followers of Jesus experienced this righteousness from God, not just as a new status, but as a power that changed their lives and compelled them to act in surprising new ways. Yeah, if God declared someone righteous when they didn't deserve it, the only reasonable response is to go and seek righteousness and justice for others. This is a radical way of life, and it's not always convenient or easy. It's courageously making other people's problems my problems. This is what Jesus meant by loving your neighbor as yourself. It's about a lifetime commitment fueled by the words of the ancient prophet Micah. God has told you, humans, what is good and what the Lord requires of you is to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Maybe someone needs groceries. Maybe someone needs help with rent or their mortgage. Maybe the Cambridge Self-Help Food Bank has particular needs at this time. After this pandemic thing is over, maybe there will be ways we can work to make our economic system more just and fair so that everyone has enough. As God's chosen ones, as God's priests and instruments, we have many opportunities to display God's generous righteousness and social justice in very powerful and practical ways right now. May God give us the power and the grace to continue loving our neighbors as ourselves in the coming weeks. Amen. The Prayers of Intercession the prayers today are adapted from those prepared by Pastor Rick Price of Lunenburg Lutheran Parish in Nova Scotia. Celebrating the victory of love over death, we offer our prayers to God, saying, God of resurrection, and responding, hear our prayer. God who embraces our past, we give thanks for your presence in the stories which our ancestors in faith have passed on to us. Continue to shine your light through these stories that we may grow closer to you and to each other. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. God who fills our present, we give you thanks for your promise to be with us in our confusion. Give us wisdom to discern your call but even more, 
give us faith to respond with love. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. God who overflows into our future, we give you thanks for the glimpses you give us of life renewed, of creation restored, of hope reborn. Fire us with passion for the future you are bringing. Give us the grace to live it now. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. God who gives insight, we give you thanks for the resurrection and instruction that you have given your people. Inspire your church to share the gifts you have given so generously that the world around us may catch a glimpse of your loving presence. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. God who gives hope, we give you thanks for your presence with those who suffer, those who are sick or isolated, those who grieve or are angry, those who serve others and are at risk, and those whom we name before you. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. God who gives compassion, we give you thanks for your loving presence with the people of Nova Scotia as they suffer from the triple blow of mass murder, the helicopter crash deaths of Captain Brendan Ian MacDonald, Sub-Lieutenant Abigail Cowbrell, and Sub-Lieutenant Matthew Pike, and the death of three-year-old Dylan Ayler. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. God who gives love, we give you thanks for those who tend and teach young children, for the safe pregnancies of expectant parents, and for families who struggle with infertility and miscarriage. We give you thanks for all who have shown mothering care, and we remember all for whom this day is difficult. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. God who gives life, we give thanks for your continuing creation, your ongoing salvation, your ever-present companionship. Fill us with hope so that even when life makes no sense, we may see a glimpse of your compassion. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. We pray this in the name of our risen and living Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. And now we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We share that peace. The sending thought, Mother's Day. You know, mothers are indeed superheroes. So in honor of Mother's Day, I present nine things you'll never hear a mother say. One, how on earth can you see the television sitting so far back? Anybody? Two, yeah, I used to skip school a lot too. Three, just leave all the lights on. It makes the house look more cheery. Four, let me smell that shirt. Yep, it's good for another week. Five, go ahead and keep that stray dog, honey. I'll be glad to feed and walk him every day. Six, well, if Timmy's mom says it's okay, that's good enough for me. 
7. The curfew is just a general time to shoot for. It's not like I'm running a prison around here. 8. I don't have a tissue with me. Just use your sleeve. And 9. Don't bother wearing a jacket. The wind chill is bound to improve. Happy Mother's Day. Receive the blessing. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.